Previously on Gears. Oh, Dizzy, kick it, kick it, kick okay. it. Okay. Today on Dizzy's Double Ds, we're very excited to have the incredibly talented Morgan Page in studio. How excited. Banging beats, boogieing bottoms. This guy knows how to put together a magnificent tune and get the party started. Morgan has received two Grammy Award nominations, the first a personal nomination for Best Remix with Nadia Ali, and in 2009 the Dead Mouse Remix of Longest Road was nominated for Best Remix. We're very fortunate to be joined in studio by this world-class international DJ. Hi, Morgan, welcome to Gears on Balls Visual Radio. How's it going? Good to be here. Not a bad intro, huh? Yeah, there we go. We'll take it. Did you actually hear (laughs) anything Dizzy said while she was, because I was just focusing on her boobs while we were doing (laughs) (laughs) Morgan, you're from Vermont. That's right. The dance music mecca of Vermont. <laughs> so now you must know Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart. That's right. I forgot there was a Vermont connection there. You see. I, I, you know, I know Ben and Jerry, actually. You guys uh, have ben the Jerry real guys? Yeah. Jerry. I, they, I would see them in the grocery store. No, oh, no way. For real. It's that small of a city. Do they, know, up, so. do they know now how famous you are? They don't know me. Yeah. It's like it was just they were neighbors, you know. So Vermont. It's crazy. That's then you went to Boston. Yes. I've yeah. never been to Boston, but I believe it's so cool. Boston's amazing. Yeah, did uh, started in radio there. That really that's how I got into the music. So, really, yeah. What did you do on radio? Uh, I, I managed a station, so I did uh, Emerson College's radio station. That's like J- Jay Leno. We're and looking Dennis for a man, uh, manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll fill in here. We'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> time. We can pay you though in rands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also look, it's a bit of, it's a bit of a commute every day to yeah. get here yeah. from Vermont, but. Uh, you can figure something out. Yeah, this was a lot of flying. Yeah. This is for a mini tour. How, yeah. how many hours were you on that airplane? Man, well, I had to fly to London from LA. Actually, no, it was in Miami for the conference. So, okay, you know, okay. eight hours there and then another 11 hours from London to here. So, mm, so yeah. yeah. T- uh, listen, before we talk about what you were doing here, whatever, you were at the Miami conference. Anything really blow your head off over there? You know, I was only there for a day. You know, we, we launched a brand new nightclub there called Adore. So it was the newest nightclub. So they've got some more competition now. Cool. But it was cool. I had a lot of uh, cool guests like Audion and Dub Vision and Sandro Silva. A lot of cool guys. So, we, yeah, we did our own night. It was like Morgan Page and Friends kind of party. And wow. uh, they flew out here. What uh, sure. w- What's happening in terms of, just, just back on Miami, what's happening in terms of the music scene at the moment? Because... Uh, it, it always it's a strange kind of way that it works we we we're, we're opposite to europe and and, and to, to the states when when it comes to music so when there's when there's springtime and there's new tunes coming out and whatever and all these conferences are happening we've kind of we're kind of at the bottom doing the opposite thing and and we very much follow that market is there a change in direction in the sound of of what's happening that came out of miami well you know it it keeps getting harder and harder right now and um but, you know, the big news in Miami was all the guys getting hospitalized. Did you see that? No, I didn't. No. Avicii. Oh, what oh yeah, Avicii. Avicii. Had yeah, he missed, he missed the, oh, what, his who, gallbladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah, who else was there? Um, and Dada Life had to fly back, and uh, yeah. Afrojack fell off stage. And wow. Just people were partying a little too hard. But, you know, things are getting more aggressive. <laughs> so the sound is getting harder. And But I hope the music, you know, stays in the mix and that it doesn't, you know, the song isn't forgotten. But I think, you know, with Avicii's album and a lot of these guys, and a lot of stuff I do, it's, it's all about the vocal, and that's how the songs last. Exactly. Now, I, I mean, uh, being American, the, the American dance scene has always been quite separated from that out of Europe. But are you finding this this incredible sort of synergy? Because I'm finding what what stuff that you're doing, you know, in the electronic kind of sound and stuff that's coming out of uh, Europe as well. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, we're all on the same we're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, Pardon. No, no pun intended. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's interesting. I feel like I, I tour everywhere except Europe. You know, I've played over there, played like Ministry of Sound, and mm-hmm. it, it, the sound definitely works, but it seems like it's a little bit deeper sound in Europe okay. and um, more techie, a little more underground some places, but it just blew up so big in the US, um, you know, the past two or three years. It's been, it's been crazy. And it's just, and I think it's, it's fueled by the college kids. They finally got away from just listening to urban music and, you know, hip hop. That was dominating forever. Which is so cool. But also, the, the fact that vocal has come back. You know, 15 to 20 years ago, that, that sort of electronic uh, trance uh, rave kind of scene, whatever you want to call it, was very much an instrumental. Now, all of a sudden, with the vocal coming in, I mean, it just makes it so pretty. Yeah, and you have to give credit to guys like I mean, like Dead Mouse when he I feel like when he blew up when I got him to remix Longest Road, mm-hmm. he brought the melody back into the music, and it was this weird moment where minimal was really big, everything was really techy, and it was like this amazing combination of you know he stripped down Longest Road and it was like the vocals and just chords, and it was magic. Stunning stuff. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah, no, we'll we'll give that a spin uh, in a short while. Where Grammys, I mean, two two nominations that must also be. Uh, a 
pretty big highlight. It's great. You know, it's you only get one shot every year for that song to be eligible, and you know, it's it's a huge honor to have them nominated. Do you write with that in mind? No. Now you that know, you've now that you've had that nom- now, now that you've tasted it, do you write going? Hmm, I wonder if. You always wonder, you know, you never know what's going to happen with the, the voting process. You know, it is a, a sort of this group of voters that, you know, it's not public, like yeah. the DJ Mag votes and whatever, but that makes it even, I guess, uh, even a better goal. You know, it's even harder to get a Grammy, but it's good to have nominations. I think if you win one, then it's, uh, you feel like, you know, it's, it's almost like cursed, like you got to get another Grammy again and, or like you got to maintain it and you don't want to have your Grammy in front of you all the time. You like give it to your parents. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, do you sit down and, and write by yourself? Do you have, uh, uh, do you have inspirations and in people that, that, that you write with or is it you and a laptop? Um, you know, I don't do a lot of work on the laptop on the road and I try to, I wish I was better at that, but, um, like we were doing this tour, I had like 55 shows this fall. We did a bus tour and I thought, Oh, I'll get tons of music done. I'm going to do a studio in the back of the bus. Didn't really happen. Got like one remix done. But, you know, I write with a lot of different people. Over the years, there's probably been about mm. 20 different vocalists. Mm. Um, it's a real collective of different people coming in and out. And, um, you know, I work with people that are just lyricists or people that just do melody. And then sometimes it's it's just me singing or it's just me singing a guide vocal. So I try to take on different roles depending on what the song calls for. Uh, but a lot of hard work to get that creative yeah. process I mean, underway, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the album I'm working on now, it's its probably, I've been working on it for a year and a half, two years. And just because, you know, you get busy with touring and things and you come back to the album process. What about iTunes and the fact that, that now uh, to buy a single is so easy versus 10 years ago where uh, you'd buy an album. Uh, now you're going to spend 99 cents and go and buy the single. Are you writing more singles with that in mind or, or are, you, are you doing what you do anyway and just happens that you're releasing singles? I think now well, it's also changing too with streaming culture and that people are sort of listening they want you know shorter songs and you know you're focusing more on songs that are being consumed rather than purchased so i think that's that's changing how you write you know i'm, I'm probably doing shorter music than i used to shorter and shorter intros and outros for sure and and putting more emphasis on radio edits you know for itunes and having worked like in radio you know what that's all about don't yeah. you yeah yeah i mean everything's important even the, that first strike the first cue point um, you know, it's very different for a DJ. You want like a really, a really fat kick drum that's easy to cue up, and um, and with radio, you know, it's all about having a real compelling intro or a good four or eight bars. There we go, exactly four bars. Otherwise, it doesn't doesn't get there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've been you've been doing this a, a long time, Morgan. When it came to remixing other artists, the Alanises of the world, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, did you just take it upon yourself? Were you approached to do you know th- these kind of remixes, or have you just sat there and went, listen? I want to try and do something and then send it send it to the artist. I did all of the above. You know, they led okay. to uh, doing uh, a beat, bootleg remix album called yeah. Cease and Desist. Okay. That was sort of a joke. It was like I was going to try and get sued by these labels. <laughs> and I, I remixed uh, Image and Heap and Coldplay and David Bowie. And uh, some of them were angry. Some of them never responded. And some of them hired me for remixes later on. Fantastic. Wow. I mean, you see, that's gutsy. Yeah, you know that's, you know, that's ask, you know you ask for permission. You know I don't do that. I just ask for you know apologize later on. There so we go. For permission. Well, there's that classic saying. Is what is it? Uh, yeah, do it now. Apologize later. Or something something yeah. like that. Um, uh, now I I want to go because the art field. Uh, one of my favorite bands. Okay, how did that come about? You know, in my head, I always heard a sort of electronic version of it happening. Okay. And I, kind of conceptualized it just in my head before actually even opening up the computer and, and, and trying it out. So I reached out to the guys, you know, they're still active. Mm-hmm. They're not, you know, actively touring, but um, they had re-recorded a cover, a, you know, a version of their own song. So yeah. they had a new master. And so I had the acapella and the guitars and I just said, Stunning. oh, this is great. It's at, the, it's at the perfect tempo for dance music. You know, let's do a reworking of it. And it's funny because it's, it's kind of polarizing. Like some people are like, oh, don't touch my baby. This is, yeah. you know, original and I have certain associations with it. And, so, and a lot of kids don't even know it. So of course. you're like, they're like, oh, it's pretty cool. I'm like, you know, this was a huge hit a long time ago. Yeah. And like, it's just funny so to gauge when, people's reactions. You when, know? You hear, when you hear radio presenters going, wow, that's a brand new song by whoever it is. And you're going, no, that's yeah, no, not no, actually. No, no. Was, yeah. That was done 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, there's kids that, that come up and they're, I did a cover of SOS by the police. And okay. they, they go, um, they think that's an original. They hadn't heard of the police. And now it's even <laughs> to the point where people don't even know who U2 is. It's just like, it's crazy. It's bizarre. It it's is. Crazy. Good. God, I feel but awesome. it's amazing because, I mean, <laughs> music has to progress and, and generations, younger generations come through. And it's, you know, people like me who get old and go, oh, you know what, these kids know nothing, et cetera, et cetera. But some of those, I mean, melody is melody. A great song yeah. is a great song. And, you know, they're timeless songs from, you know, the 1950s or whatever. And if you 
catch it and sit there and go, wow, I'm going to redo this kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, it may re, uh, re-spark somebody else's career and all of a sudden get them wealthy again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was important to do. It was, uh, you know, it came out in 2013. So, you know, a 2013 mm. rework, make it current so it could fit on radio. And uh, it was great, you know, because you always, whenever you interact with the original artists, uh, you're always worried they're going to either reject it or be like, oh, you know, hear it and have a knee jerk reaction to it. But mm-hmm. they loved it. So, you know, sent it to the outfield and thank God they were into it. So, Martin, if we had a blank piece of paper in front of you here. Morgan, not Martin. I said you Morgan. Martin. That's what I said, Morgan. Sorry. Martin, Martin's the other guy with that, gr- that my other brain's, great song. My brain's, in seven, <laughs> my brain's in seven places. Forgive me. If we have a blank piece of paper in front of you right now and you can work with anyone you want to, both dead or alive. Mm-hmm. And do a collab with who's it going to be? Well, you know, we reached out to Adele, and she actually got back. And she said did she? She was a little busy having a, ki- a kid. You know, she's yeah, yeah, a yeah, parent yeah. A child, Kids always so get in the way. <laughs> I know these pesky kids. <laughs> we were just shocked that she was uh, interested enough. That's to write amazing. Back that is so amazing. That's really cool. But yeah, in terms of wish list, um, you know, I think you know Ellie Golding would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adele, Ellie Golding. Um, I mean, Ellie Golding's yeah. doing really well as well, yeah. isn't she? She she's 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 on a lot of different she, remixes. She's at the very moment. good. It's a lot, yeah. But she's got the voice. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That voice that you can really uh, use. What about some of the divas? What about the Arethas and the Mariahs and those kind of people? I'd be amazing. You know, I you know I haven't thought about those, but you know, it's I'm always I try to find vocals before they blow up, and that's been kind of the strategy. Find a really distinctive voice mm. like Lissy or Angela McCluskey that's got a bit of sawdust to it. And because there's too many vocalists that are trying to sound the same right now. And that's the stuff that doesn't last, you know, it's like you want songs to be timeless. So, you know, the melodies, the lyrics, this, th- those things have to resonate, but the voice has to be something new mm. and something that you attach yourself to. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you've been in South Africa, as you say, like a really little mini fly in and, and, and fly out. How did that come about? I know you were playing Nikki Beach. Uh, you played it on, on Saturday, which is a very, very cool little uh, spot to, to jam it. So how did, how did the South African connection come about? Um, you know, I think In the Air did really well here. Yeah. So uh, we were working with some of the local record labels like Soul Candy and uh, F Records. And um, it just, there was all this interest in the music and we've been trying to sort of sort something out for a few years. So it finally happened. And Because yeah. Daisy got all of your stuff on her phone. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. We hope it's legal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> no, I am a huge fan, a huge fan. How are you enjoying South Africa? I love so it. We've been, we 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 fed the lions our hands yesterday. <laughs> Here in the park, <laughs> saw the saw the elephants and the lions. You know, doing some of the tourist stuff and. Uh, but you got to see the wildlife. It's just so exotic down here. Have you only yeah. Have you only been to Johannesburg and, and Gauteng this year? Yeah, and I'm flying to Cape Town today, so I figured good. I had to have that for part of the trip. Good, good. How, so, how long are you going to be there for? I only have a day. So oh, I'm, well, nice. I need one Dude. night a day. Yeah, that's it. Wrong way around. You're going to have three days in Cape Town and yeah. like one day here. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Go and try some of their wine. And and then, yeah. so you're there for the day um, and then tomorrow you fly out? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, go today, have an evening and then one one full day. So hopefully see Table Mountain and some of the cool lookout spots. I think yeah, uh, I think next point. time you, next time you come around, it's book, a book a week off and go and, go, go and spend some time around it's, Cape Town. More, it's a hill. It's not a mountain. Yeah. It's, a <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a hill. Yeah, it is beautiful. <laughs> no, no, it's very, very cool. So now hopefully we're going to get you back here as well. well. Listen, wait, before that, I mean, how were the gigs? I mean, how was the response? Uh, did you have a great time? It was amazing. It was better than I expected. I mean, you never know when you fly so far, you have high expectations for your show because you've been on a plane for 20 hours. But uh, it was amazing. Both shows were sold out. And Wonderland was incredible. I think it was 6,000 people at Wonderland. Fantastic. And, you know, full house at Nikki Beach. So It was like midday for you when you were playing those gigs. So you were, you were in the middle of the day in your yeah. body clock. Yeah, I, it took a lot of Red Bull. So you know, whatever time it was. <laughs> whatever yeah. time it was, you got into it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, and, and hopefully the guys are going to get you back here again. Yeah, we definitely got to do it again. Brilliant, brilliant. Man, what a what a treat to have you here in in the studio. I think you should get hold of the art field again and do Voices of Babylon. Yeah, can Voices you, of Babylon. Can yeah. you do a remix of that? We could do it, yeah. Okay. Just send it to <laughs> us first. <laughs> what do you want us to play? I've got um, I've got the In the Air and I've got Longest Road. Hmm. Dead let's, mouse. Do, let's do Longest Road. Since let's he just played it at Ultra. Did you hear about that? He dropped uh, the acapella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultra. When he played he it, He yeah. brought it back. So awesome. It's in every set. Awesome. Now, yeah. awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Great to have you. Thanks yeah, very thank much you. for coming yeah. to join Thanks us, for having man. Me. Thank have, for, a, have a safe flight. And thank you for uh, imparting some of your knowledge and also enjoying uh, the fact that uh, uh, that you're in South Africa and so many people have loved having you here. Thanks for making that long trip out to, to South Africa. Excellent. Morgan Page. Gears on balls.co.za. Weekdays, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m.